Thank you for watching part one on why I decided to get a hysterectomy and welcome to part two where I take you along with me on my final pre-op appointments. So I made it back from the appointment with my doctor, my very last pre-op appointment. We pretty much just went straight into the questions. This was an appointment that was really basically for anything that I need from him before surgery. I recorded our conversation, but I didn't want to just play the conversation all the way through. So what I'll do is I'll save the questions and I will let the recording answer it for you. First question to him was, was there anything that I needed to purchase that would help me out? Like a belly band, because I've seen where other people said that a belly band helped them out a lot. There's not really any medical reason for you to need that. Sometimes it, sometimes people find comfort in it. Having that little bit of pressure all the time on your belly is gotcha. can be comfortable. But it's a it's a personal call. If, okay. If it feels good for you to have one, then have one. If somebody next question was, are there pictures that's going to be taken, and can I get those pictures? Usually, what I'll do is I'll take the pictures and then I'll bring them back to the office so that I can upload them to your chart. Okay. And then the hard copies are yours. So I should oh, okay. have an appointment like two weeks after surgery. And I'm going to take them. Okay. My next question was, what is the wound care for this? And I asked it from two different perspectives of the laparoscopic or the regular incision. And here's his answer. Not really any care that you're going to need to do for him. You know, oh, okay. Keep him clean. That's okay. It. When I first met with him, he told me that I could not use, um, could not have fingernail polish or toenail polish on, on the day of surgery. So I wanted to clarify what that really meant because I was like, is it the color? or is it the or the acrylic or the gel that they were concerned about so here is his answer to that so what i'll tell you is that it is easier to ask for forgiveness than permission um meaning i feel like we got ladies that come in pretty frequently with the nails all dead and, and looking nice and mm -hmm. we work around it okay and sometimes that means taking a little polish off sometimes that means even melting some acrylic off but if that needs to happen they'll make it happen but most of the time our, our pulse oxes are pretty good at reading through okay so that's what it is okay that's the reason, yeah. okay well my next question was if i have a bikini cut will i be admitted because this is actually going to be an outpatient surgery is this answer to that Maybe at least overnight okay. yeah if we end up doing a big cut okay my next question was my follow-up appointment am i able to drive myself to that appointment and this was a very good answer you can drive as okay. soon as you feel like driving. So number one, you'd be off in narcotics before you get on the wheel. Right? Number two, um, keep your driveway in the parking lot or something. Practice slamming on brakes. Because what I want you to be able to do, this is the barometer for when you can drive, is to slam on brakes without saying, oh, that hurts, and you jerk your foot back and you're okay. the person in front of you. It's common sense, but people, people don't think of it that way. I feel like if I describe it that way, people think of that. That's the, that's the rule. When you can slam on brakes, you can drive. And gotcha. I don't care if that's three days or two weeks. My next question was, will I see you after surgery? Because I've had back surgery before, and after that surgery, I never saw my surgeon. Never. At least I don't remember seeing my surgeon. See me, but you'll be all googly eyes and stuff. So I won't I remember you. Remember seeing me. So I usually try to wait until people are awake at least a little bit okay. before I talk to them. But a lot, I've had whole conversations with people in that don't remember. That don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll, do, I'll do my best for you to see me. Okay. If you don't, you don't. All right. Um, Certainly if you end up staying, you'll see me. Oh, no. But my last question that I'm going to share with you is, what are my recovery do and don'ts? There are your three rules. Listen to your body. Right? Mm -hmm. She's not going to lead you wrong. The, the one big rule is no heavy lifting. So nothing over about 10 pounds for, I'd say, six weeks. Okay. Maximize that healing. Don't lift anything over 10 pounds. The other rule is nothing in your vagina for six weeks. So. I hope this helped you all, and I will see you when I go to the appointment at the hospital. I'm running late, but head on the highway, get to the appointment, and then I'll let you know what happened, okay? All right, I'm out for my appointment. They didn't really do a lot. They took my blood pressure, my pulse, my temperature. They took a few things of blood from me. They took a urine sample. They didn't do an EKG, which was kind of strange to me, a sleep apnea questionnaire and I don't have sleep apnea per the questionnaire. I put my medical directive on file, made them aware of my will. I signed off on the life-saving blood if needed. Other than that, I got my packet to cleanse myself. I have to do three days of antibacterial soap cleansings. And then the night before surgery, I have to drink a 32 ounce of Gatorade 
full sugar, no diet, no zero sugar, just can't be the color rated because now they're saying that bulking yourself up with carbs the night before surgery is very good for you and Gatorade does the trick. Cool. That's my update and I will talk to y'all when I get to the house. Okay, I promised you all that I was going to come back yesterday and I was going to show you what I received from the hospital. This is the solution that I have to put all over my body on the night before and then you leave it on for three to four minutes and then you wash it off and you have to make sure that your bed sheets are, are um, freshly washed as well. She said if I were to lose this just give them a call and they will put in a call have it waiting for me at the pharmacy. It's not a prescription but it's easier to have them pull it and have it at the um in the pharmacy so you can pick it up because she was like if you don't use this they will cancel your um surgery so the next video that you will see from me will be me heading to the hospital getting checked in and my husband is going to be taking over the vlog from that point on and i will probably resume vlogging probably on day two all right so with that said do not forget to rate comment and subscribe to the channel and be looking out for that next video and once it is produced i will link it directly below so that you can just click on it and continue on with the video series all right check you guys later bye